Yeah, ciao guys, welcome back to the channel. What are you doing? What? What's the voice? What What voice? You're doing that voice. No, that's, that's, no I, I always talk like that. You don't I say ciao. I do, I do say ciao. Just do it in your normal voice. Alright, no, I, I'll do it your way. Try another voice. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Pip. I like drinking coffee and talking about what. Why are you doing that voice? What voice? Just do your normal voice and you don't even like coffee. I... I do like coffee. Yeah, do. I yeah, I love coffee. Drink too much coffee, if anything. Show them what's in it. Oh. Right. Just introduce the watch and do it in your normal voice this time. All right. Put it. Put it down. All right. Uh, today I'm going to review the Seiko Baby Marine Master or Steel Master, I guess. All right. Well, you'll be a bit more enthusiastic. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're wondering what that sort of bit was about, then why not drop me a comment and ask? I've just reached 5,000 subscribers, which is a massive deal for me, especially as I haven't uploaded a video in about two months. I'm afraid Sari doesn't cut it with this Pope. <laughs> but I thought to sort of celebrate getting to 5,000, I'd do a Q&A video, so you can just ask me any questions. It could be about watches, it could be about that bit, or it could just be about life in general and I'll answer them in an upcoming video. I mean, Q&A videos, they're for people who are kind of short of content, right? No problem with that here. So today's watch, the Seiko Baby Marine Master or Steel Master, depending on whatever you want to call it. It was lent in by subscriber Ian. Ian, thank you so much for letting me spend some time with this watch and Ian has lent in other watches as well. Absolute legend. So this isn't just any Seiko. The Seiko SPB185J1 or the Baby Marine Master or the Steel Master, well, I think it might be the perfect dive watch. It's a 42mm diameter, but it wears more like a 40 thanks to the 48mm lug-to-lug measurement. And at 13mm, it wears manageably slim and can be put on all the straps in your cupboard because it's got 20mm lugs. And very much like your mum's, these lug holes are drilled and make access for strap changes a breeze. I changed out the bracelet for this Artem sailcloth strap, which if you follow almost anyone on Instagram, you'll have seen recently. Now, I did get this strap for free from Artem, hence the paid promotion thing. They'll be appearing in more and more of my videos. Suffice to say for now, I think this looks great and it's handy as I think the bracelet is probably the watch's only weak point, but more of that later. 200 meters of water resistance is what you'd expect from a reliable diver and this is a proper Prospects model, a diver with a apostrophe S model. So it really will be able to plummet 200 meters below the water. The lowest I ever go, of course, is doing impressions of people on a YouTube video, but it's nice to know that I could go lower if needed. And this being a Seiko, even 200 meters below the water, it'll still be nice and legible. Here's the Loom shot. It's Seiko's proprietary Luma Bright, and it's a solid 7 out of 10 performance every time. And yes, I do say that to all the girls. Are you writing these? Damn, that was a bad one. But unlike me and you, it's in the daylight where this looks best. The faceted hands are really the stars of the show. One side is brushed, the other polished, and that means that they kind of glisten underneath the flat sapphire crystal when you catch them at a glance. It's a really nice touch, and along with the polished sides of the case, links, and even the bezel, there's just a bit of blinginess to it that I'm very much here for. The indices also reflect light, and combined with that steel bezel insert, the whole thing feels much less of a tool watch, even if it absolutely is. The 143 gram weight certainly makes its case for feeling like a tool watch, as do the simple indices. It's standard dive affair with double baton indices at 12 and a singular baton at 6. The date window is cut out at 3 o'clock with a shortened marker to its right, assuring that this is a true diver's watch. It means that all the markers at every hour are visible, even in the dark. The paddle second hand has that splash of red, it's a tasteful touch of colour that just lifts it all a bit. As does this movement, by the way. Behind the standard Seiko Great Wave case back is the 6R35, a 3Hz movement with a very reassuring 70 hours of power reserve, which means you could, in theory, take it off for just about 3 days and it'd still be ticking. This example is running at plus 12 seconds per day, so not exactly Mussolini train accuracy, but within the minus 15 to plus 25 tolerances quoted by Seiko. But for the money, which at retail is about £1,060 or $1,200, 
I think the tolerances and the regulation of this movement will be a bit of a disappointment for some. Luckily, you're never going to pay that much for one of these, even new, but there's plenty of good deals to be had on the secondary market. And I know because I've actually started looking into getting one of these myself. However, I do have a few little hang-ups. Oh, and, and one main hang-up. First off, I mentioned the bracelet. So the bracelet itself is actually fine. It's held together with friction pins, so resizing it is a bit of a pain in the arse. But once it is sized, it's not going anywhere. The main problem though is the clasp. It's a milled fold over clasp and it has four holes of micro adjustments, but also this absolutely awful divers extension. Honestly, this thing is horrible. Ignoring the fact that it's a nightmare to actually operate and that when you do have it activated, I guess the word is activated, it looks atrocious and very much like the thing has malfunctioned. If you leave it unopened, it juts out and interrupts the tapering of the bracelet around your wrist with this sort of point that sort of comes out. And look, I make stupid and unwarranted points all the time, but thanks to Seiko, I am starting to at least see how annoying they are. Other than that, there's not much I don't like here. Even the bezel with its usual Seiko smooth action, it lines up and it's a joy to operate. It helps too that as you rotate it, you have this reassuringly low pitch, punchy click. Take a listen. Ooh baby. So it feels good and it looks amazing, at least to the naked eye, but to the eye that has brains in it, you'll see under macro that a couple of the indices do have some smearing on them. As I say, you can't see these with the naked eye, so it's not something I even spotted until after filming. But you're not going to get Grand Seiko level finishing, at least under the dial, at this price. But for the most part, it gets close enough, and a special shout out here to the amazing Sapphire Crystal, as without the superb AR coating, I mightn't have even been able to see those smears anyway. Okay, so what are my final scores for the Steelmaster? A classic design, coupled with a solid movement that now boasts a 70 hour power reserve available at a good price if you go grey market. The service warranty is officially a year, but Seiko's manufacturer's warranty is listed on Calibre Corner as three years, but there's also the suggestion that Seiko recommends taking your watch to where you bought it if you run into problems. Okay, it's a bit of a mess communications wise on the warranty, so comment below if you have any experience with a Seiko warranty claim. The fit and finish, being a Seiko, is great for the most part, but no watch magic as we did have those smudges beneath the crystal. Still, I think this is the sweet spot for Seiko. You get much more quality here than you would for a Seiko Monster or Samurai, which at retail would cost you about $600. And I mean, if you shop around, you shouldn't pay much more than that for this anyway. So that's my take on the Seiko Baby Marine Master or Steel Master. Let me know yours down in the comments and drop a question if that's what you want to do. Thanks again to Ian for letting me spend some time with this watch. Please like and subscribe everyone if you haven't already done so and I'll see you in the next one.